Hi there, thanks for joining me and welcome back to the channel. Well, um, I talked to my last recent video, uh, we had a little uh, V2 rocket, uh, which was really very good actually, very cheap to buy and looked absolutely superb, so that was quite a revelation. Anyway, today we're going to go back and have a little review, comparison review, like we did with the, the Phantom, the Phantoms on Halloween, but today it's not Halloween, it's now of, uh, near to Christmas. So we're going to talk about Wellington Bombers today. Now it's a bit of a point of interest for me because where I live there's actually a, um, there's a memorial not far from where I live for a Wellington bomber that crashed in a field that, uh, on a training mission and all the crew were lost. But it's uh, very much an overlooked aircraft, the Wellington. Um, it was the main bomber that the RAF really had for the first two, three years of the war before they got the Hamdens and the Lancaster, of course, and the big Sterling and the really heavy bombers. We didn't have a heavy bomber at the start of the war. Um, nobody did, actually. Um, but obviously that changed in the back 42, 43. But in the meantime, we had the Wellington. Now, the Wellington was actually a really good plane. It was uh, basically designed by Barnes Wallace. It had this geodetic crisscross construction that made it like um, lattice work and then covered in fabric, a bit like the a bit like a big version of the Hawker Hurricane. Um, now, it may have looked a bit crude, but actually it was very effective because it made the aircraft quite light. It made it fairly cheap and quick to manufacture. And best of all, it could really take a hell of a lot of punishment. Um, and there's uh, lots of stories, and we have one right here with the matchbox, whereby, I'm going to put this one down for you, we have got... A quite a famous incident where this is the aircraft um, over Duisburg in Germany on a bombing raid, raid and it's, uh, it's not, well, this is April 1943, so this is when probably the swan song almost of the Wellingtons, because as I say, the big bombers were coming in. But this was um, an incident whereby uh, the aircraft was hit by flak, as you can see, and is beautifully depicted in the artwork. Uh, and I mentioned this before, haven't I, about uh, Matchbox kits. One of the reasons I'm such a big uh, ambassador, if you like, or enthusiast for them is the, the artwork really sold these kits so well. Um, a guy called Roy Huxley, who does it, he's actually signed it here. Um, he was such a great artist and just made the difference and made these kits so desirable and visually exciting, you know. And the Airfix ones at the time, uh, they had Roy Cross, another great artist, actually. And unfortunately, just after the time that these came out, Airfix went away from using Roy Cross, um, who was, you know, in a very similar mould to this, um, a similar style. And they started to produce kits that had a picture of the finished kit on the front that wasn't very well made. And, you know, they looked absolutely awful. It just shows that imaginative, um, colourful, quality artwork can really sell a product. And this is, the, uh, for me, is probably the... Uh, the ultimate example of that, I think, Matchbox kits, definitely. And I've still never seen anything that's really bettered them uh, in terms of the artwork. So, anyway, back to the story. So, this aircraft gets hit by the flak, as you can see, and it actually blows off the rear turret, uh, sadly killing uh, the rear gunner, uh, who I'll mention. It's a chap called, uh, I think it's um, Sergeant Lorenzo Bertrand, the poor chap that was killed. And they actually found his body in a field in Germany. He was buried not far away. Um, but this aircraft, the back end of it was kind of shattered. Um, but they actually got this aircraft back to England, which is incredible with the, the damage it sustained. It says here, during the night raid over Duisburg, a shattering explosion rips into Wellington HE 239, a 428 squadron, blowing off the rear gun turret. It doesn't mention, but I say uh, Bertrand was killed, sadly. Fuselage fabric and parts of the vital control service were also destroyed. Sergeant L. F. Williamson was awarded G. The, the CGM for courage and flying skills, bringing his battered, crippled aircraft home to base. Now I have a photo which I must share with you, which I think people will like to see. And here is the actual photo of the said aircraft after landing. Um, quite remarkable that it ever got back. It's got virtually no rudder left. The rear tail planes are just about, just about there. You can see the rear gunner's just gone. Um, but you can clearly see here this barnes Wallach geodetic construction, this lattice work uh, of aluminium, and just how effective that was. I mean, that is just the best advert for this concept. You know, I'm sure that when barnes Wallace saw that, he must have been absolutely amazed. Anyway, 
we'll get on with the review but um, this construction I think saved a lot of men's lives in these aircraft for sure um, lesser planes would have gone down no problem at all anyway let's get into the review then um, I will just uh, there's another story actually the aircraft we'll come to that in due course let's do matchbox first so you know the drill we have a three colour kit this is the red range so this is the tier three we might call it be careful with that expression, that means other things now, doesn't it? But let's say the, th the third division up from division one being the smaller kits, the purple range, then they had the orange range, and then they had the red range. Uh, now, these kits came with this um, matchbox, of course, were famous for their multicolored plastic, which is not to everybody's taste, it's fair to say, um, but very much suited the sort of younger audience that they aimed it at. It was aimed at sort of modelers that were basically, I think, aged about 10 to 13. Uh, and beyond, because I mean, I, I still find them appealing today, but it was quite a clever thing to do. It was okay, some purists will complain and say that you know, you know it's, a, it's like very toy like and all the rest of it. Yes, I suppose that's true, but if you paint it, when you see them painted up, you can't tell it becomes irrelevant. You know, it's just a youngster, perhaps you know, eight, nine, ten year old, can not paint it and still have a decent looking Wellington. Anyway. Let's have a look at the back. So we've got three options, which is typical of a matchbox in these ranges, especially this uh, red range. So we've got three options there. We've got the uh, the Ghost Squadron, four to eight squadron, uh, Royal Canadian Air Force. I should have mentioned, by the way, these chaps were from. Uh, I think this is why this poor gunner chap, uh, Lorenzo Bertrand. I think he had Italian uh, ancestry in him, but uh, sadly he was lost. And then we've got the Coastal Command, which has got a different uh, a different frontage. This uh, the gun has been replaced on the Coastal Command version. It's more of an observation window at the front, and it has a some sort of a radar underneath. Uh, so I think it's sonar. So uh, they were hunting for U-boats basically, and this was uh, based in Gibraltar, as you can see. And then finally, we've got another one that is um, based at Helmswell. Um, in Lincolnshire and that's the Polish squadron 300 squadron so any of our Polish friends out there will probably be making a beeline for that one I guess and then we've got this traditional uh, the window box which is very nice and then they talk about the multi-pose stand and there we go so let's crack into it let's have a look what we've got I say I mean is, is there a more attractive painting on the front of the kit I don't think so let's have a look Careful, it's quite an old kit. So this is from 1975. So this is actually 43 years older than the Airfix kit that we'll have a look at shortly. Very nice and careful. Oh, uh, we've got some clear parts. It's okay, it's just the spare bits that have come off the stand actually. A bit of stand there. And it's nothing to do with the main clear parts, which we'll start with actually. Um, but yeah, let's just there's, there's the stand. Nothing unusual, just like the last one, identical in fact. But again, you know, they don't give you a stand on modern kits. Why not? You know, that's really bizarre. I don't understand why we can't have a stand. When we're paying, you know, these days you'd pay for a Wellington bomber. I think it's about thirty pounds, but you don't get a stand. Anyway, that's my beef rant over. Let's have a look. Let's just start with the. Uh, oh, I keep saying let's start with something. Something else pops out. Well, we've got the original decals. They look a bit discoloured. Um, but I'll have a little bet with you. I bet if you I got I got those in water, I bet they work absolutely fine. Um, I don't think the discoloration. I think it's actually the paper that's discoloured more than the decal. I bet they'll be fine, and you know, slight discoloration is not a major problem if you're going to weather it anyway. You can see the uh, the way that it's. Uh, look at that. A bit of a reaction there. I'm not sure that's a good thing to put it back on there or not. But um, the decals on Matchbox kits, you know, for what they are, they they work okay. Let's have a look, Steve. So, we, <coughs> first of all, we're multi, multi position display stand. We get a little bit of advice on that. Bring you in so you can see properly. There we go. And then we've got the colour callouts. So, mainly dark green, dark earth, and night black. They're the main colours, unless you go for the, um, the white one, which is the Coastal Command. And then we have the Instruction opened up. I missed a bit on the back here. Yes, very important actually. Um, on the other side, see we get the uh, 
the main page, which has this sort of uh, vignetted shadow depiction of the, the artwork in red, because it's the red range, and then we get the quick uh, paint guide for the small parts. All very rudimentary, of course, because it's, it's aimed at that age group, you know, but it's adequate, and if you follow this guide, you'll end up with it looking quite decent, you know, uh, for, for what it is, and uh, this retailed at about... I think it was about one pound twenty twenty five or something when I bought my first one. So you know, you're getting quite good value, aren't you? Anyway, you paint these various parts: the uh, the propeller and the pilot and the guns, the back of the turret, one or two things like the exhaust and the tyres. And you can see there we've got the uh, the leading edge on the wings and the and the tail. And then inside we have this opens out into one sheet. Starts with the two pilots, quite a basic cockpit, obviously not a lot of detail in this one. And then you've got your little guns, uh, turrets with swivelling guns, which is quite good. Do not cement, so they swivel, which is good, positionable. And then you've got the two halves of the fuselage going together, and you get the little windows down the side, so it's good that they put the window glass in. Your rear turret goes in, and your cockpit area goes in, and you bring the two halves of the uh, fuselage together. Then you've got your front section there where you can see we've got the front turret going in and you've got your alternative chin for the coastal command version um, antennas radar etc and the, uh, uh, the little skylight um, what do they call that there's a name for it isn't there i'm just going to check this yeah the astrodome that's what it was called this thing here let's just bring you in a bit more yep there, a little part 76, clear part, the Astrodome, which they would look out of to help them navigate, uh, help the navigator to have a look around him. Uh, there's, another, there's a story coming up on that when we get to the airfix, but we'll move on to that later. Then we've got the engines going in, uh, with your props, main engine and your spinner, and then your tail planes going on, and you put your undercarriage legs, which you've already built here. They go into the little nacelles underneath the engine. And then you put, put, pull it all together and your wings go on top and bottom, pop on your engine nacelles, stick your actual engine frontage with your props you've already constructed. And then finally we've got the exhaust and the, the gear doors. And it's either open or closed, depending on whether you've got it on the stand or whether you've got it on the ground. And there you have it really. So that's that. So let's... Um, Let's have a good look at the parts. Now, I've had, I've had lots of great feedback on these videos, especially the, this, this type of format video, but it's difficult for people sometimes, it's very difficult for me to give you the... Uh, I haven't got fancy video edit, editing equipment, and I want to give you a, a better look at it rather than just me in and out, you know. So I've, I've got a new tripod that the camera's on. I'm going to now do a bit of fettling, if you please bear with me. Hopefully you'll get a much better experience of what you're going to see because you're not seeing me anymore. I'm going to try and get it pointing down so you can see it properly. So I'll put some lights on here and I'm going to move the camera. Please bear with me a second because this might take a, a little bit of fiddling about. I think it'll be worth it though. So hold on. First, let's try not to crash it into anything. And we're going to bring it over here. And I'm going to drop you down so you can see it properly. Right, now then. Righto. Let's see if we can now give you some better clarity of these parts. Now how does that look? Is that looking a bit more clear? So let's start We've got several sprues, which we'll move out of the way. We're going to start with... Bear with me. Sorry about the delay. Let's have a look at the main sprue here. So what have we got? We've got the main wing. You can see they've actually... This is, this is 1975, remember, that this has been produced. And I think that this is really rather nice. You've got some really nice uh, lattice work. The geodetic construction has been actually moulded in 
which for 1975 is pretty impressive. It's been moulded right across the wing and the tail planes as well, as you can see. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Then you've got your nacelles for the, underneath the engine, you've got your props, uh, wheels and tyres here, spinners here, and then the same across on the other side. It's almost like a mirror image of itself, isn't it? I've got to say that, you know, the panel line detail isn't bad, to be honest. Obviously it's very soft, which is very much the Matchbox style, but that's pretty nice, let's be fair, yeah? That's pretty nice. So let's move that one out. Let's look at the clear parts. Now we're not going to expect crystal clarity on these, but you know what? They're not bad. So there's the main sort of uh, cockpit canopy sort of uh, lattice work there. Then we've got, this is the alternative I think for when we have the Coastal Command chin. Then you have the Coastal Command here. Yeah. Coastal Command alternative frontage without the guns and you've got your front and rear gun turrets uh, They look, look fairly good oh, We've got a bit of blurring here Trying to get the focus, there we go And then we've got these uh, windows, so the, again got the lattice work, the geodetic latticing down the side I mean it looks pretty nice, you know, and it's not Just putting it up to the light, it's pretty clear actually it's not the most, uh, it is a bit of distortion in it, but you know, we're talking about a very, very low cost kit here. From 43 years ago, that's really quite excellent. And, and the thing is that it'll go together well, they always do. Next one, we've got, you've seen the black sprue, now we're going to have the same thing, but green. And boy, is it a frog green, isn't it? <laughs> that's a very verdant looking uh, green. And again, you can see the lattice work in the moulding. So they've managed to create that really quite well. Very nicely done, I think. Uh, the, the loudness of the green may not be to everybody's uh, liking, but obviously if you're going to paint it, hey, it doesn't matter. But again, you, you've got this contrast. You've got the black underneath, green on top. If you're only eight or nine years old, you're going to like that. You've got the cowlings for the engine here, and then the cell, the top of the cells, I think it is this time, for the engines just here. And then over here we've got the, uh, the two pilots, a bit rudimentary in the legs for the uh, undercarriage. And here we've got the pilot seats. But do you know what, I think that's, that's really nice that they've actually bothered to mould that in. You know, you get models at this era that they wouldn't have even bothered with the geodetic uh, lattice work. And they've actually moulded it in quite a nice way. There's a few marks in the actual plastic but they're just, they're not, they won't be visible if you paint it. See there? Yeah. Got two of them. That's just the actual way that the the plastic has melted in the mould, but it's not a, it's not a flaw. It's just within you know you just see optically something that's completely smooth that won't be visible if you paint it. I'll just vanish. Very nice. And then last but not least, we've got the fuselage. Now what have we got? So one piece fuselage. Again, you've got this. Um, the rib defect that the uh, it, it does look like a hurricane there, doesn't it? <laughs> like a big hurricane. And you can see they've got ribbing all the way down the side. You've got this alternative frontage that I mentioned here. Um, this is the standard one. This is the coastal command one with the sort of ray down chin. And then you've got the back of the gun turrets here. Um, it's pretty good. Sorry, I'm just le leaning across to give me more light. There we go. Got to have some more light over here while we're at it. Just bear with me. Many lights as long as possible. I've got plenty of them. I'm not skimping on the lights. So yeah, you can see that it's uh, it's got a lot of detail. Really. Even the engines look quite nice for 172nd. You've got lovely detail here on the exhaust pipes. I've built this kit many many years ago, and it went to, together absolutely fine. It really did. And you've got your uh, what's that? Is that the uh, the exhaust system? I think. Sure what that is actually. What is that? It's gonna be a little bit foxed. I think it's part of the undercarriage system. But it's nice, you know, you've got a lovely sort of figuring and the you've actually got stretch skin effect here. Over they've done a great job with this. I think this is one of the better matchbox kits for sure. Anyway, let's bring you back. If you'll bear with me. We'll get back to where we were. 
open for a second. I'll bring you back over here if you can just hold on, bear with me a second. This is where we uh, crash the camera. Okay, so, no surprises there, it's a matchbox kit. I've got to be honest, um, I think this is better than the Phantom was, and the Phantom was quite nice I thought, but this has just got some, you know, it's got some 3D elements to it, and you've got that lovely moulding, and, you know, have you seen any flash on any of this? None. Zero. This is why people like matchbox kits. One, there's no flash. Two, they go together. Three, they were cheap. Four, they have this beautiful artwork. So it's no wonder that they were popular for so many years to build. Anyway, let's put those back together very gently because it is quite a, an old kit and therefore quite rare. I think I've got, I say that, I've got two of these. Bursting. I've got three. I've certainly got two. Uh, I might have a third, I can't remember. But, um, gentle with it so we don't have to do any damage. Put me a little stand back and we put our clip ups for gentle on there. So we'll turn them and then the loose bits. We I mean I could just chuck these in the bin but I'd love to do that because it's part of the original kit you know. So there we go. To be honest I think I'd give that sort of 8, 9 out of 10 for what it is and, and you know what it represented at the time. It's a nice kit. It's a nice kit. What is there not to like there? You know, you've got artwork that you almost want to put into a frame, it's so nice. It's just a new kit, really. Now then, let's get back to the modern day, a bit more up to date. Let's fast forward 43 years to Airfix. Um, I'm trying to remember, I didn't actually build the Airfix Wellington of the day, um, but I think a friend of mine did, and it was very flashy. They often were, I'm afraid, then. Uh, 75, you know. Didn't like it, didn't fancy it, and just love this one. So I had at least two of those. So now we come to the new issue, the recent Airfix of today, which um, actually this one was built in uh, 2018. So let's have a look at this. Here we go. Now, of course, it's in this lovely, flashy, uh, glossy red box, which is their, is their way. And again, we've got another interesting story with some dramatic events taking place on the cover here. This time we have a fire on the starboard engine and I mentioned about the Astrodome, the little glass dome on top. Now here it's been used uh, in a way it was never really intended. Let me just read you what it says. It says here, on the night of the 7th of July 1941, Sergeant Pilot James Allen Ward climbed through the Astrodome, climbed through the Astrodome and onto the wing like you do of his damaged Wellington had attempted to smother the engine that was on fire. Fighting both the slipstream and the flames, he extinguished the fire and then climbed back into the aircraft. <sighs> what? Really? <laughs> Unsurprisingly, for this action it says, he was awarded the Victoria Cross. And rightly so. I mean, it defies all belief, frankly, to do that. I mean, what would the aircraft be travelling at? At least 150 to 200 miles an hour, even if they were going easy, you know? I mean, that is just terrifying. And the artwork's quite good. It's a CGI, not a, a proper artwork, but it's quite good, you know. It depicts the, uh, the action. Um, so another very dramatic event where great peril faced by Wellington crew and they, they made it back, you know. Anyway, on the side we have got two options on this kit and the other aircraft is quite an interesting one that they give an option on as well, which is... Uh, get you zoomed in here. Let's just see if I can get you. We have here the second one, R, just has R on the side. Well, that's R for Robert. This is a, an aircraft that crashed on a training mission uh, and ended up at the bottom of Loch Ness in Scotland and remained there for many, many years until it was dug out, I think, in the 90s. I think they rescued it. And it's now uh, been taken to Brooklands. It's been restored at Brooklands. I think, I think they've pretty much finished the restoration. It's, it's complete again. So a remarkable story. Anyway, let's get on with the kit and have a look what's inside. So nice box, nice sturdy box, like they always are from Airfix these days. Okay, instructions. 
Ah, now the only thing I'm not too keen on is it's this blue, blue tacky plastic again, which is uh, very soft and uh, yeah, very rubbery soft stuff. In complete contrast to Matchbox. But uh, let's get it all out. And we'll have a proper look. First of all, the instructions. Uh, and nice that we've got a separate colour call out chart with the decaling and. Sorry, I'm going to just cut back some of these lights because I think it badly to my eyes. So we've got some nice, uh, yeah, really nice uh, representation of clarity of exactly the, the pattern, the position of the decals and the stencils. On the other side, this is Arthur Robert. Oh, there we go, it tells you. Arthur Robert, 20 operation unit, do, 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 lost in mouth. Oh. Recovered from Loch Ness in 1985. Okay, slightly earlier than I thought. Now I display at the Brooklyn's Motor Museum in Surrey. Somebody told me that it had been moved recently, so it may not still be there, but this was in 2018. Um, so that's a remarkable story, and certainly uh, either is quite an interesting one to have a conversation about if you're building the option. Uh, I like that, that's a nice colour call out sheet. That's really tammy, I like, isn't it? I like it, it's too. Right, so. Now then, there's ah, now something about this kit that's a bit unusual is that um, there's quite a lot, and this is getting to be a trend with Airfix and others, quite a lot of the parts and uh, areas of the aircraft are not seen, so they actually mark them up in red. Um, well, I actually did it in green, perhaps I'm wrong. It says here, that, that, bring you in so you can see what I'm talking about here, because it's quite a noteworthy item. says here, there are many detailed parts provided this kit which fit inside the fuselage but are not easily visible uh, on the completed model and can therefore be left out of the construction if preferred. So you don't need to construct it or frankly paint it either. Uh, these parts are highlighted in green here and throughout these instructions. So anything that's green is not going to be visible. Not the red. Um, hmm, interesting. It's a bit of a shame, isn't it, really? Because it's uh, it looks like it's going to be beautifully detailed, this kit. So in a way, that's a little bit of a blow. They've sort of included parts that, you know... It comes down to whether you want to say, well, I know it's there and, you know, I've done it and it's painted. But I'm not sure about that. In my case, that reminds me of the Mustang, which I did, which has got the best part of 100 hours work that's never been seen since. <laughs> so I sound like I completely made the whole thing up, but I didn't. Is it worth it or not? I think it's just down to whether you enjoy if you get into the building you think, oh what are you doing? You know, or maybe if you uh, I don't know whether you leave half off or some kits have a clear section, don't they? But they never look good and anyway, we'll get on. So basically you start building up your uh, internal fuselage and this is the sort of you're gonna see this geodetic pattern that we talked about on the matchbox, you can see a lot of that in this kit. Uh, you're building up uh, areas for the navigator and for uh, then the forward area for uh, the pilot and co-pilot and the cockpit starts to be built up further down here oops popping out Imagine. then you just going back to what I said then you start to see this geodetic uh, construction it's all over this kit I mean they've really gone to town um, what did I say it was about 30 pounds I mean it's really quite good I think actually uh, at 170 second scale to go to that much effort, it is definitely commendable. And here, you can see quite a lot of work to do. You've got to cut out. Ah, you've got to cut out. Um, not sure if I like that. You need to cut out all the bomb um, doors, it would seem. See that? Here. You've got to cut out your bomb doors. And then you're going to fit in all sorts of internal padding and structure, wiring, and green, remember? So that means that it won't be seen. So whether you want to do it or not, it's up to you. Then we move on to moving forward and the inner structure. And you can even see that they've got everything. They've got the walkways, the crew walking back and forth up the aircraft in. Absolutely incredible. The way they've tackled this kit is... Is brilliant. I mean it's almost like it's a, a 48th or even a 30 second scale kit that the level of detail that they've gone to is absolutely stunning. It's just it's beyond what you would expect isn't it for a 30 quid kit. 
in one seventy second. It's uh, I think this could be a really enjoyable build and a very educational one. You're going to learn a lot. Anyway, sorry. So you've got your navigators area and you've got your bomb aiming guy and you know, all the areas with the bulkheads that go in here, strengthening bulkheads and seats and all sorts and so much detail. You know, little seats. It's all there. And you've got several of the former sort of uh, main spa bulkheads that are going in. And don't forget, if it's green, it's not seen. Uh, red obviously is seen. I think that's what it's trying to say, it's trying to differentiate. The red means yes you can see it and the green means no you definitely can't. So then again you've got the walkway here for the, the rear gunner walking back to... I mean, how many kids put that detail in? That's amazing. I tell you what, this is not going to be a quick build is it? I don't think it is. And then you've got your... Um, uh, Turret, the ring area for the front gun turret goes in, support ring platform, and then the rear one here. Then you've got your instrumentation and equipment that's on the side with fold down seat here, oxygen bottles. Wow, all sorts of stuff here, that's incredible. And then we've got the fuselage actually coming together with a proper wing spar, excellent, you know. Then you've got your actual uh, Bombay door, which you've you already created the space to cut it open. Now if you want it, you seem to be saying there's one piece here to close it up again, which I don't really understand if you just opened it up. Why would you do that then? That's not entirely clear. Uh, I think maybe it's an option so you can just temporarily close it if you wanted to. When built, here we go. When building this model, the undercarriage is in the down position. You need to follow this. Okay, so you've got different steps for down or up undercarriage, which is fair enough. The engine nacelles are going on. You can see how, I mean, this is almost an unfair comparison with the Matchbox kit because we've, we've come forward 43 years, but in many respects, this is this is cutting edge now. Um, this is as good as it gets at 70 seconds kit because they're showing so much internal detail. I've never seen a kit with more internal detail at, at this scale, ever. Nothing comes close, really. So you're putting all your nacelles and building them up. And there seems to be different versions of the nacelles up or down. So there's a lot of parts here. And you're building up your wings, putting the top and bottom halves together. And this is where it comes and fits into the nacelle. So I hope there's going to be a good join. You're going to notice it otherwise here, aren't you? You've got poseable ailerons, or, well, I don't know how poseable they are, but you can pose them, I'm sure. See that? And then you've got your engine mounting starting, so the bulkhead for the engine to actually bolt onto. And then you've got your undercarriage going in underneath with the, the legs. And then you see here we've got the bomb bay doors opening this shot. And then you bring your wings in, both wings fitting onto a spar. Again, really, I mean, I've not built the kit obviously, but it looks well designed this. I've got a feeling. I'm just casting my mind back to people who have built it and I think that everybody raves about how nice it is so I think it's going to be a pleasure. And then rear uh, tail wheel, open or shut door, yep. Then we've got the tail itself and the rudder going on. And then we've got the tail planes and the elevators. And then we're on to the engines, Look nice and detailed and the cowling's going on and then fitting it all in together onto the nacelles there and then we start with the bombs there could be quite a few of these I think so what does it carry? it's carrying one, two, three, four, five, six and I think there's going to be more in the middle I'm sure there'll be more to come there you go and attached to the actual door itself which is interesting I'm not that familiar with the Wellington, really, so yeah, it's quite cool. And then we're into the guns, so gun turrets. So we've got the front turret, and then we've got the rear. Ball turrets, two ball turrets, quite well armed, isn't it, really? But they didn't go over the top, they didn't try to make it like a fortress and weigh it down with lots of weight. They just had a, a twin browning gun turret at the front and the back. And here's the famous Astrodome we talked about. 
which obviously is very important because you might need to just climb through that and climb out onto the wing like you do <laughs> if you have a bit of a bad night it could get a lot worse <laughs> and you've got your uh... <laughs> sorry I'm not making light of it and that kind of heroism is it's hard to take in it's just astonishing then we've got our glass going in the side over the geodetic construction so you can see that clearly and we've got your undercarriage wheels and tyres and it's weight on wheels so it, again fabulous really good in detail and then we've got the the exhausts and all the little bits like the crew ladder and the under tune window and we've got the propellers finally going on with the spinners and they go in finally get placed into the front of the engine and your canopy cockpit windscreen and you've got an option here again beautiful detail you've got an option for having the window open closed or open fantastic I'm impressed that's it I've never seen a 70 second scale kit that's impressed me that much now I haven't, I haven't finished yet obviously I haven't not got the plastic yet but if it's half as good as the instructions seem to make out I'm in for a treat here um, so I've got some instruction, uh, some decals here which I put some I put tape on Tammy I'd say which has actually made it bow a bit I might want to just release that I think and that not have been one of my better things but I'm sure it'll be fine airfix decals are always good and I think what we'll do I'll bring you in again so you can see this properly because I think it's worth it so hold on and we'll have another little just a little uh, minute while I just reconfigure you bring you in over here so wide there we are my chair out of the way, that would help a lot. And then we'll bring you down. Proper look. I'm hoping that this will pay dividends in terms of the detail that you can actually see. Okay. Right now. Let's have a look. So. First sprue. Sorry, it's got to reach across you. <clears throat> there we go. So here we've got the cowlings, the propellers, and the spinner caps, the engine parts itself here. Looks nice. No flash, not to speak of. Be a tiny, tiny bit there. Be very picky. We've got focus. Yes, we have. See, my camera is very limited. It doesn't want to go in really close, does it? Not at this range. The exhausts are hollowed out, which I think is absolutely superb. And again, we've got some lovely lattice geodetic uh, framework visible in the skin. Uh, obviously, it's a canvas over geodetic in this case. And then we've got your cowlings, etc. That's that one done. So we've got the clear parts. In. I'm not sure this is actually the end before. That might be the first look at it, I think. Okay. No, it doesn't let me in. It doesn't. Talk amongst yourselves, I'll be with you. Here we go. Right. Then. So, you've got the two windows either side that goes with the main crew window. Um, now I don't think that it has open windows all the way along so I think you'll actually over paint some of this because I think it's like a window and then open then a window and then open I don't think it's completely open all the way along I think you'll have to mask off we've got the uh, front and rear ball turret window we've got some of the side lattice work here cockpit framework windscreen here chin piece here and we've got one two three I'm suspecting there's going to be other optional uh, different versions of this kit in the future because they look slightly different don't they I think there's going to be variations so just out of interest I'm going to check which one is the one that is used that they say should be used so I didn't look at that so obviously one's open and one's closed ah oh, yeah so, okay so this actually is the open window it's slid back that's why it looks different so, 
3 or 12 it says. So it's that one, that's open, that's closed, that's unknown to be advised in the future obviously for some other variant. And there is your Astrodome here. Okay, then we've got bombs. Many, many bombs. Little though, aren't they? You can, you can see the problem that we had, we didn't have a heavy bomber that could take big bombs. This was the problem with the Wellington, why it became a little bit obsolete by the middle of the war really. I think 43 was probably its last proper year in full service. But look at the detail here, look at the finesse we've got. I wonder if I can zoom you a bit more. Look at the detail here, these guns. That is beautiful. Oh. Oh yes. You've got instruments for the cockpit here. Look at that. I mean, you know, this is this is this is a quantum leap. Uh, I said about the quality on the Airfix Phantom being very good, but I think this is even better. This I think was brought out around about the same time, same year. It seems to be flash free. No significant flash around. Some stellar detail. I've never seen an Airfix kit like this. Views large. Again, you can see the the ribbing effect, the geodetic. Well, what's really impressive is, ah, okay, you can see here we've actually got the got options here. So we've got the the Bombay doors are by default are open. This is the bit I didn't understand from the instructions. They are open bombing. If you want them closed, you have a separate piece which will come uh, apart, which will actually be the closed door later. But look at when we turn this over. This is what is so impressive with this kit. Wow, I mean, it just it blows you away. Now, are there any injector pins in the wrong places? I'll bet you they're not. Because they were very, very aware, weren't they, about what can be seen and what can't be seen. So, I'll take a punt and say you won't see any ejector pins in the problem area at all. Oh, look at that. This is like no airfix before it, I think. 70 second scale, to be that sharp, it's beautiful. Absolutely stellar. And I'm not Airfix's biggest fan historically, quite the opposite. But this is on another level. Let's have a look at this, look at this. The wings again. Very fine, stress skin effect over the, the lattice work. It's a canvas over geodetic uh, framework. Here we've got all those walkways we talked about. Absolutely incredible. I mean, you know. Fine detail here. It's superb. Bulkheads. I mean, this has got to be Airfix's finest work ever. <laughs> I really think it is. And again, more of the same, really. More stress skin. No flash to speak of anywhere. You can see how they've avoided ejector pins by having these cut off pins you need to remove here. That's how they're avoiding the ejector pins on the actual part because it's two sided. Look, there's no ejector pins visible there at all. They have them places like that, not visible, but on places where you will see them, no. They have a stub instead and they push the ejector, the ejector pin onto that to get it out of the mould. Last one. Finally, some of the fine parts. Uh, again, we've got the, uh, the rudder and the tail. Um, Tailplanes, ladder again. Look at the fineness here. It's fantastic. Here's the Bombay door. If you want the Bombay door closed, oxygen bottles. Look at, again. Look at the stressed effect on the ailerons. Beautiful. It's amazing. Turn it over. Well, this is the impressive part of this kit. It's when you turn them over. Normally, you turn them over and it's all ejector pins and nasty. And there's so much visible in this kit that they haven't. But well, they've got one there, haven't they? But I don't know if that's one of the visible ones or not. I suspect this is one of those that was uh, greened out as not visible. 
but we'll see, but I'm sure it won't be a problem. It's a tiny bit of flash has encumbered itself, it's nice to get because it's so fine, I think. Oh no, we're on the back, I'm sorry, I thought it was a ladder, it's not, it's, forget it, not a problem. Look at this here. Some superb moulding. So there we go, let's just uh, bring you back. <clears throat> Turn you because I think my battery is actually going very, very low, so I'm going to have to uh, make a rather quick end of it. I have a slight problem with my tripod as well, so I'm having some troubles. Right, there we are. <clears throat> quick end then because I'm about to get a flat, unfortunately. <laughs> that's playing on my part. That is absolutely stunning. So that's the Airfix Wellington. Mark 1A and C. Um, different kettle of fish. It's not. It's not. This is better. This is 43 years new you'd expect. But this, I think that's the best Airfix kit I've ever seen, bar none. No contest with anything that Airfix have ever produced before or since. The only thing that comes close is the Hunter, the, uh, the Hunter jet fighter that we saw last year, and that came out from the same sort of people, the same sort of time. So there you have it. Um, Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, there'll be some more new, new review coming out of a new kit shortly. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed it, found it interesting. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you all again in the near future very, very soon. Thanks for your time. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.